Hi Frank. So good first lesson there. Um, so what I want to go over is you've got the basic chords down already. Um, I, th I think D minor might have been missing, so we'll just go over that real quick. But the main takeaway that we got from it was those extra minor chords. Or in other words, all the other ones, um, the other nine chords other than uh, A, D, and E minor, right? So those are the only ones that really have their own shape, right? Any other minor chord, you need to take one of those shapes, bring it up the fretboard, right? So in in, um, in Lion Eyes, you've got... Uh, uh, I think uh, that version was in the key of D, but keep in mind that the original version is in the key of G. So what you'd want to, so if you want to use them, um, just as a side point here, if you want to use those chords but play along with the original recording, what you'd have to do is take D up the fretboard with the capo until it becomes G, right? So how you how you figure that out is you need to know what's called the chromatic scale right so you don't need to know how to play it now but you just need to know how it works so in the chromatic scale which means just all the notes one after the other with nothing skipped most scales you know leave out certain notes but the chromatic scale is literally just all of them uh, so you know so that's what it sounds like when you play it right but all, all you need to know about it is that the notes go from a to g uh, all of them have sharps one up or one semitone or one fret up. So like, so for example, A. So there's A, one up from that is A sharp, then B, right? So then, you know, you have the sharp, then you go on to the next letter. Except for B and E, right? So B just goes straight to C and E just goes straight to F, right? So the, um, the, Bar chords that we had in um, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, Lion eyes were B minor and F sharp minor. Now that's not the only way we can do them, right? So we, do, you know, they they generally sound better when you do it, but the the bar chords because you get that extra bass in there, right? So you were doing B minor like this, which is perfectly fine, right? But one thing about it is that you have to make sure that because these strings aren't being held down in the right place for that chord now, you have to leave them out, right? And it's not it's not the best way to go about it to, to just avoid them with the plec like that, because you know, you're, you're gonna hit them at some point, like you know, you'd have to be awfully careful not to. But, so if you're gonna do it like this, and this is fine, just make sure that maybe your third finger is up high enough to touch that A string, get it out of there, and then you can get the thumb over. And, and you don't need to wrap the thumb around or anything like that, just barely, just that, that'll do. Just to take it out of there. Now keep in mind, with that chromatic scale, you can get all the other minor chords with this, right? So if you bring that up one, that's C minor now. C sharp minor, D minor. Oh, by the way, speaking of D minor, the normal way of doing it is this. Okay, so first finger, first fret, first string. Second finger, second fret on the third string, G string. And then third finger, or your little finger. I tend to use my little finger sometimes. I just find it kind of easier to fit between the, the other two strings. But most people do it that way with the third finger. Uh, on the third fret of the B string. And as usual, try to get the thumb. For most of the chords, that was another thing as well. For most of the basic chord shapes, um, you don't include the sixth string at all, right? So the two E's, E minor and E major, they do include it, and G. Other than that, you, you try to get rid of it. So, um, uh, so the other one then, so there's B minor. So, and remember where that comes from, right? That's A minor. There's a sharp minor if you take it up just one, and there's B minor, C minor, and so on, right? So the F sharp minor then, where that's coming from, you know, you, technically you could do the F sharp minor this way, right? The only problem is you'd have to take it up there to the 9th to 12th to 11th fret, which is just not really practical. So we'll just use a different shape, right? You know the way D, you've got D, then D major 7. Um, so we can take this, and if you just add that F sharp note to the top of it, then it becomes an F sharp minor. So there's D major 7. There's F sharp minor. So the reason it works like that is because here's E minor, and for this we'll just leave out these two strings altogether. So there's E minor, okay, 
there's F minor because there's no E sharp, so. And there's F sharp minor. So even just being able to do that and knowing the chromatic scale, all of a sudden you've gone from knowing three minor chords to knowing 12. It's just all you need to do is just put, put, that sh put one of those two shapes down in the right place. Um, so other than that then, we just, just did a little bit of strumming as well. Now the thing about strumming is that the particular patterns, it's don't really matter all that much, right? So, so if we do, um, I, can't, I can't remember the chords in that key, but, um, yeah, it's uh, G is the next one. So the point is, is that you're going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up constantly with your right hand. And you just make it a bit more interesting by skipping a few. That's all. You really don't need to worry about patterns all that much. The one we were doing there um, that we had for that one was called, it's called the Calypso pattern. Uh, so that's down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, right? But the thing is, if you miss one that you meant to hit or you hit one that you meant to miss, it really doesn't matter at all. That's more like a variation than a mistake, right? So... But the thing is, is the way you don't do it is this. Because you stop and start and stop and start and it, it's just not regular, right? So down, down, so you see the way I'm going down, coming back up without hitting it, right? Down, down, up, so I hit it that time. Then what's difficult about this is the fact that you're skipping it down, right? Which just, it's just a bit counterintuitive. That's one of the strong beats. You generally, it's, it just feels a bit odd to skip that, right? So down, down, up. Straight back down, up, down, up, down, down, up. But you can mix it up and change it, you know, every bar if, if you if you want, you know, just just by sort of hitting or missing different ones, and you can kind of emphasize certain ones as well. So like. Um, So just to make it a bit more interesting, you know, not all strums have to be the same. Um, so I'd stick with that one for now, just that. And just don't worry too much about sticking with that, that particular pattern. What you do need to worry about is keeping the movement going completely regular, no matter what. And I say movement and not strums because you don't always hit it on the, on the way, but you do keep moving, right? Um, so, uh, okay, we're at eight minutes, so we should probably end it here. So listen, I'll talk to you next week, and um, any, any other questions, let me know. All right, talk to you then.